Good morning, people. I'm almost across the border to Vic with all of that wondrous outdoors bounty and game that it promises. But I'm not shy of it here. I'm in Cancoban and I woke up here this morning because I couldn't drive any further. I had to have a little snooze on the road last night. About 5 a.m. this morning, cruised up into here. I'm going to have a fish. I'll have a fish before I head over. I oh, you know, Dad took me to Cancoban when I was younger. And Tristan and I used to go up to G High Flats a lot. I saw my first Samba on G High Flats. He caught his first really good fish up there. So I'm going I'm to go fishing this morning. And you know, grey, slightly rainy, misty weather. That, you know, I prefer that to a, to a hot sunny day. This brings back more nostalgia, but it's excellent hunting weather. It's good fishing weather too. I just love it. Oh, folks, I could, the good times will be natural. I can smell it, I can feel it in my bones. Happy days. Well, you can probably hear from the flow, the water's up a little bit. But it's May, and so we're within that last month of the season, and the browns are moving up into the creeks, and we're not too far away from the lake. We'll just see what happens. If there's some fish, whoop de doo If there's not, what a day to be alive. Good times.
folks, there's deer tracks on the sand just there. The flow of the stream is generous, but not too much. It's very cold. I will dwell here at this camp for a few days. I'll hunt and fish and have my good times natural. Oh, straight on. Straight on. First cast. See you later. Well, tomorrow I'll plan it a bit better. I'll work out what my, uh, my my dinner will be, and I'll work this stream properly and try and catch a nice little feed of trout for one. Damn it, I knew that. I just put on a fresh lure at <laughs> the moment. The moment I just thought I'd do a little test cast. Rainbow! Nice rainbow too. He oh. did put on some acrobatics, that's for sure. That's a nice rainbow. Fantastic, very good, beautiful, wild rainbow. Excellent. Damn, I did say that I would be taking some for a feed today. This one's getting a knock on the head. brown trout. He'll go with his rainbow. Well, no deer just yet. That uh, couscous salad dressed with a lot of brown and rainbow trout. Living my best life so far, guys. Fueling it. Mm.
Good morning, folks. You might be able to see that I've found myself first thing in the morning at some nice high elevation. Very deliberate tactic. I'll keep my elevation for the next half an hour or so and hopefully get right up into some gully heads where I'm predicting deer will come up towards me. You might be able to tell that I'm, I'm loaded up 18 kilos, aprox, give or take water. Yeah, staying out overnight, right up here. I don't exactly know where my campsite will be. There's a few prospective areas that I've seen on the topo, where it's just not so steep, but anyway, I'll work it all out as part of the adventure. And I really want to get onto some samba deer in a very big way. What an absolute monster. The tree's huge. It's like 50, 60 meters high. It's just huge. Man. Done a good job of that one. Sun's going down, I've got to hurry up, I've got to get this sorted. It's wet, well, the source of water's good. Check that out. Holy shit. On the honey hole. That's what we're talking about. That's what we stick it out for. Fuck yes. Yes. I've still got to find a campsite. I'm not going to camp right next to where the action happens. I'm not going to do that. So I'll keep going that way. Well, this clearing up here will do. I'll need to do a little bit of clearing to clear the clearing. But, Danny, I can see straight over into that opposite face. But here I am. I'm in the prime zone. I have a wallow, an active wallow 100 meters that way. I put up deer on the way in on flats that are maybe 150 meters from me, so just past that wallow. I've got a glassing room down there. I'm in very remote country. I've seen a deer on this slope before. It was the last time I was samba hunting before it wasn't legal to go to Victoria for a bit. I've got unfinished business here. But if something can happen down on that slope there, because I've been thinking about it for almost three years, I've been thinking about how I would approach it differently, how at different angles, just everything, you know. I want to do a cross gully shot. How would I get down rough country? I was at that point where all that kind of stuff, too much to talk about. I'm gonna go have a look. Come have a look with me. I can see Samba. I can see Samba. Oh my god. He's coming out. He's coming out. Let me get this right. Let's get this right. There. Feeding out. Here I am camped, right on the top ridge of a hill, looking down across the other side and there's a stag, a samba stag. Now, it doesn't look like the most mature stag. That's fine, I'm looking at a samba stag. For me, that's just like, ah, oh, it just holds a sacred place in this bush and I want it. I'm gonna take one. I have to work pretty hard at it though. I mean, if there's one thing I've got from the last couple of weeks is I'm relearning this species and they're just as hard as they've always been. They're not just waiting to slip up for me. Or well, maybe, hopefully one is. Oh yeah, boy. 
Yeah, you show what you're made of. Look at that body. Oh, they want to fight. This is just too good. Good morning. So, sun's only just starting to show itself, which, which is good, but I've been up for about an hour. Could hurt here a bit of activity around my tent, actually. Deer, I mean. Like, I'm at like 2 a.m. last night, woke me up, freaked me out a bit. I'm about to get a hot brew on. And I'm on to Sam Deer. Yeah. Two of them. Three of them. One. Two. It's amazing how th those ones just seem to melt just appear out of nowhere. Um, I mean, they probably came from the bush line above it, but it's just, I'd looked at that spot about 10 seconds beforehand, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, they're there, you know? Up behind. He's on the lookout for something. Something's bothering him down. He's just aware. Could just be that he started to hear the other deer. That could be it. focusing on this one for a little while now and I've lost all sign of the others but I don't think they've moved away I think they're just in those little pockets where I can't see in between a tree and all that kind of stuff Stag is very aware he's, there's something that's bothering him I hope it's not me but I don't think I'm close enough to him for him to Oh, he's found his bedding area for the day. That's cool. Right near the black stump too. Glad he's done that because, oh no, changed his mind. I was just about to walk, another deer turns up, but it's the other stag. It's the other buddy stag again. If it was a hind, this is a whole different matter. I can pull car, I can just get into it, do what I need to do. Now a stag, another stag's come to join him. It's the same two that I've been dealing with.
bit unfair if he's buddy on the ground. I've got an obsession happening with this basin. I really want to try and shoot a deer today, but one thing I know I want long term is I want to shoot a good stag out of this basin. I want that for a lot of reasons, but I feel very attached to this. And with this rain coming tonight, I don't want to leave, but I might have to. That's fine, I'll keep coming back. I will keep coming back. Moving quietly through this shit. It's next to impossible. I found a pretty sure I can get a good shot off. I'll just show you. She's hopping, she's hopping, she's hopping. Where is she? I did it off that tree there. And I just felt pull and it kind of just, yeah. just hit the back a little bit. But then she's walking off and I just dropped another round in. This is where she was. She's in there. I shot her. And she's just trotted up. There she goes. Cheers. She's lost a fair bit of fur coming down that hill. I didn't get that on film, but um, it was a pretty extreme roll. Like, it's, she really picked up some speed, eh?
successful samba deer hunt. <laughs> was um, tad unconventional. But what did I expect? You know, I think from the other side, I just didn't get the fullest sense of just how steep it was. And it's amazing though that they were spending that much time in an extremely steep territory like that. It's been an incredible day, an incredible day, 24 hours watching Samba Deer. And yesterday Arvo was just up on that other side, watching across here, and just saw, like, the flat that they're on is further down that way. Got one come out and he's mooching around in a second, and those are the two stags that I've just basically had all this time with over the last 24 hours. I just loved that. I just loved watching them. It was, um, it's just rare and special. I'm also glad I didn't shoot those ones because, you know, with a few decent antler deer under my belt, lucky me. I mean, without the sticks, this is the same thing. I'm coming into beautiful wild country and I'll be packing out meat. But I'll tell you what, folks, of, of all the venison I've ever tried, Samba has always been the best for me. Not subjective, but I love it. Absolutely love it. Tell you what, guys, there was actually a little bit more to this story, but I'm going to save that for another video. The weather really messed around with my plans. Either way, thank you very much for watching. I guess I'll see you guys in the next one, and let's all just keep getting our good times natural, eh? Maximum respect.